Manila, how to set up and play. First thing you'll do is lay out the game board, create a supply of money. You'll have your three boats, and then there are four goods in the game. For each of the goods, you'll have a corresponding dice. You'll have a share price track with a marker that starts on this bottom row below zero. You'll have a boat tile for each of the four goods, and then you'll have five share cards for each of the four goods. The game will last until one or more of these hits this highest mark, the 30 mark. So for a shorter game, you can start all these prices one or even two levels higher. Next, you'll take three goods cards from each of the four types, shuffle those, and deal each player two cards. After dealing two face down to each player, any undealt ones can be returned here to the display face up. So each player is going to start with two random share cards that were dealt only known to them. They're going to start with 30 money or 30 pesos, and they're going to start with three pawns. If you're playing with only three players, you'll use the fourth pawn. I'm setting this up for a five player game, so we'll use the standard three pawns per player. The first part of each game round is to auction to become the Harbor Master. The Harbor Master is going to get three special abilities. First, they'll get an opportunity to buy a share. They'll also decide which three of the four goods tiles will make it onto the boats, and then they'll also decide the starting positions of the boats. So starting with the previous Harbor Master from the last round, it'll be a round robin auction. For the first round of the game, just simply designate randomly a player to start. Let's randomly select the yellow player. Normally this would be the previous Harbor Master from the last round. They have to start with a bid or they can pass. If you pass, you're out of the auction. And then just simply go clockwise. Each subsequent player has to raise the bid by any amount or they can decide to pass and drop out. And the highest remaining bidder will win the auction for Harbor Master. So let's say for this example, this player actually won the bid. Maybe the high bid was 10, so they have to pay that to the bank. We'll designate them as the Harbor Master for this game round. All other players get their bids back, so only the winning bidder has to pay their amount to the bank. If there were no bids, if everyone passed, then the previous Harbor Master would retain their position. The Harbor Master gets three privileges, the first of which is they're eligible to buy one available share. In fact, this is the only time you're able to buy shares is when you win the Harbor Master auction. So they can select any of the available ones. They'll pay the current price. The minimum is five. So even if the price token was below this amount, they would pay five. If it was above, they would pay the actual value of where the price token was, and then they would take the chosen share face down into their hand. So buying a share is optional for the Harbor Master, but the next two privileges are mandatory. They'll next decide which three of the four goods tiles will make it onto the boats. So let's say they choose this one, this one, and they decide to leave this one off and go with this one instead. So they're basically deciding which goods tile is not going to be part of the boat race this round. And then their final privilege is they get to set the starting position of each of these boats. They can be set anywhere from zero to five. The only thing to keep in mind is that the total has to add up to nine. So if he decides to set both these boats on four, then we know this boat has to be set to one. So the Harbor Master deciding the configuration of the starting boats as long as the starting positions add to nine. Once the Harbor Master has finished their three actions, we're now ready to start the first of three rounds of placing pawns and moving the boats. So starting with the current Harbor Master, they'll take one of their pawns and place it on one of the available spots on the game board. So now let's look at each of the available spots. The first option to a player is to place on an available empty spot on any of the three boats. You would immediately pay that amount to the bank. So to place here would be two. 
the second player that would place here would have to pay three and the third would have to pay four. What you're betting on is that this boat will make it past 13 and safely into port by the end of the third dice roll. If it does, all pawns on the boat will evenly distribute the payout amount. So here it's 24. So if there was only one pawn on this boat and it made it through, they would get all 24 pesos. If there were three pawns, they would equally share eight pesos. So you pay the amount based on the placement spot, and if the boat makes it through during the profit distribution phase, they will earn the payout on the boat tile. This is the pilot section. By coming here, you're paying for the right to adjust the position of the boats before the third and final dice roll. So if you come here, you would pay immediately two to the bank. And if you came to the second pilot position, you would pay five immediately to the bank. You're not going to exercise your power until right before the final dice roll, though. This next section is the pirate section. There's two spots available. It costs five money to go to either of the spots. What you're hoping for as a pirate is that on either the second or the third roll, that a ship exactly lands on the 13 spot. If it lands on the 13 spot on the second roll, you can hop your pirate aboard the ship and possibly share in the ship's profit. If it lands on 13 on the final dice roll, you actually get to plunder the boat completely. For each of these spots, you're betting on the number of boats that you think will arrive safely into port. By coming here, you'd pay four immediately to the bank, and then during profit distribution, if at least one boat safely made it in, you would earn a six peso payout. By coming here, you're paying three to the bank and you're betting that at least two boats will safely make it in and you could earn eight, or you could go there, only pay two peso to the bank by placing your pawn there, and if all three boats safely make it in, by the end of the third die roll, you would earn a 15 payout. For these spaces, you're betting that ships will not safely make it into port. So by placing a pawn here, you'd pay four, and if at least one boat did not safely make it to port, instead it landed in one of the shipyard spots, you would earn six. The second boat, if there is one that doesn't make it, goes into the B slot. So by paying three, if at least two boats come to the shipyard, meaning they don't make it safely to port, you could get an eight payout, and here, the riskiest, you could pay two by placing your pawn there, and if all three boats end up in the shipyard by not making it safely to port, you would get a payout of 15. The final space available is the insurance office. By placing here, you do not have to pay anything. In fact, you immediately get 10 pesos. It's the only spot where you get money when you place your pawn. The problem though is now you're obligated to cover the insurance policies if any ships make it into the shipyard for repairs. So you're hoping as the insurance agent that all ships safely make it to port because if a ship lands here, then you're obligated to pay that six to either the player or the bank. If two ships landed in, you'd have to pay the six and the eight. And if three ships came into the shipyard, you would be on the hook for all three of those payouts. So let's look at how a sample game round might look like. We know this player won the auction for Harbor Master. They did exercise their option to buy one share. They set the starting boats with the tiles on spots that add up to nine. Now we're ready to start the pawn placement. You always start with the Harbor Master. They get to place one of their pawns. Since this boat's so far ahead, they're gonna to decide to place there. They have to immediately pay two to, the, two to the bank. And then now we simply go clockwise and the next player in clockwise order would get to place one of their pawns. So here's how the remaining players decided to place their pawns. Black went next. He's hoping two ships can get to port. He had to pay three immediately, but he got that spot. Then blue went, blue paid five to get the first pirate spot. Then orange went, orange had to pay two to get the pilot privilege later in the round. And then red decided to come here. You'll remember they didn't have to pay anything and they immediately got the 10 pesos from the bank. Once all players 
have gone around and placed one pawn, we're now ready to roll the dice and move the boats. This is where in a three player game, you'll remember each player has an extra pawn. This is when you would go around the table again and place that extra pawn. So only in a three player game during the first pawn placement, you'll do two rounds. In a normal four and five player game, it's just one pawn placement each, and now you're ready to roll the dice for the three ships that are on the board. One other little rule before we roll the dice, a player can choose not to place a pawn, but if they do that, he or she cannot place any more pawns for the entire voyage. But now we're ready. So after the first round of pawn placement, we'll take the dice corresponding to these. So we know this good wasn't selected. And we'll simply take all three of these, roll them, and then based on the amounts, now adjust the boats one space per pip on its corresponding die. So here we see, based on the die roll, this first boat only got to advance one, the blue boat got to advance six, while the green one got to advance five spaces forward. After you've resolved the movement of the die roll, now we go back to the second round of pawn placement, again starting with the harbor master placing one of their pawns going clockwise until all players have placed one pawn in the second round. So here are the decisions after the second round of pawn placement. Yellow has really decided to double down on this ship by placing a second pawn there, and you can see the other pawn placements by the players. Now you're ready for the second die roll. So here were the die results from the second roll. An important rule is the harbor master gets to decide in what order to resolve these die rolls. They may decide, you know what, I'm going to move this boat first based on their pips before I move the green boat. So they can resolve it in any order, which is important, especially when we think of the consequences of the pirates. So let's say the harbor master first decides to advance this boat three spots. One, two, three. It has exactly landed on 13, and this was after the second dice roll. That's the first time it even has a, mathematically a chance to land there. If it lands exactly on 13, and this is the second die roll, this pirate, or this pawn that placed on the pirate spot, gets the opportunity to hop on the boat for free if there's a spot. Now, if there was a second pawn here, the second pirate would get a chance to hop on this boat, but there are no spots available. Next, the harbor master will advance this one one, and we'll move this one six forward. Now that we've resolved the second round of dice rolling, we go to the final round of placing pawn, again starting with the current harbor master, placing on any empty spot, as we've talked about, going around the table clockwise until all players have placed their final pawn. So here are the decisions after the third round of pawn placement. We've had a couple new pawns placed on the pirate spot. We've had the same player take the second uh, pilot spot. So now before we do the final third roll, this is when the pilots get to act. The first pilot goes first. They can move the boat plus or minus one space. They can choose any of the boats. If they push the boat past the finish line, it'll automatically go into safe port. The pilots can move a boat to the 13 spot. It just doesn't trigger the pirates to attack. But let's say this orange player, they get to do the pilot first. They really want this boat to go in. They decide to move that forward one. Now the second pilot gets to act. They can move one boat plus or minus two spaces. Let's say they'll move this one. Again, two spaces really trying to get this one home. Once both pilots have made their decision, we're now ready for the third and final die roll. So here's the final die roll. Harbor Master decides to resolve this one first. The three pips will simply push this past the 13 marker and safely into that port. We'll do profit distribution later. Now we're going to resolve this one. This will go to the harbor master decides if a boat lands exactly on 13 and there are pirates on the final roll, instead of just hopping on the boat, what happens is all these pawns get removed. This boat gets completely plundered. Any pirates here will evenly split the 24. So since there are two, they're both gonna immediately get 12 pesos from the bank. And then it's this first pirate that's gonna decide 
whether this boat goes into the port or the shipyard. Since that player wants to get their payout for two boats making it in safely, they're going to move that right there. And then finally this boat gets to advance two, but we can see it's at 12 or below, so it's going to simply go into the shipyard for repairs. One important thing is if a boat after the third roll makes it to 13 and there are no pirates, it can actually go safely into port. Only if it's 13 and there are pirates does it get plundered. Once you've resolved the third die roll, you're now ready for profit distribution. We know these pilot pawns already got their special power. The pirates already plundered and got paid out. Here, this boat safely made it into port. So each pawn will split the 30 pesos. So the black player will get 10. And then the blue player, since they had two pawns, will get 10 each. So they'll get 20 pesos. The yellow player, since at least one boat safely got it into port, they'll get their six payout. And the black player, since two boats safely got into port, they'll get their eight payout. It's unfortunate for this boat, it did not safely get into port. So this pawn, if it did, would have had 36 all to itself, but it didn't safely get into port, it went to the shipyard, so this pawn doesn't earn anything. The red player predicted that at least one ship would make it into the shipyard, so they're going to get paid six, but it's going to come from the insurance agent. So the red player is basically going to pay themselves the six pesos. If there was no insurance agent, that six for this red pawn would just get paid by the bank. Also, if there was no pawn here and a ship made it into the shipyard, this player still has to pay the insurance policy even though nobody bet on a ship coming there. They would just have to pay that six to the bank since they took the insurance agent spot. The final step before starting a new round, for each good that safely made it into port, their stock price gets to go up one level when at least one or more of the goods stock value hits the 30 level that triggers the end of the game and then you add up who has the most money wins the game if you haven't triggered this then you just go into another round cycle starting with an auction for harbor master and then three more rounds of pawn placement and dice rolling if a player is ever out of money during the game let's say they had no money they can take alone by setting one of their shares aside. By setting the share aside, they can immediately get 12 pesos from the bank, but it's gonna cost them 15 to repay the loan. They can do that at any time, or the 15 will have to get repaid at the end of the game. A player's final score will be the pesos they have on hand, along with the current value of each of their held shares based on the current market price, most money after that tabulation wins the game. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Manila.